Well, what's going on, LFA TV? This is your boy, Luis, and as always, thanks for tuning in to the channel. I appreciate it. First of all, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody who has been supporting the channel since the beginning. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, I just want to announce that we have officially hit 5,000 subscribers on the channel. This is very huge. It's you know, monumental for me just for the fact that, um, you know, I'm just a random guy uploading videos to YouTube about my car and you guys are watching. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you very much. And for those of you guys that have been here since the beginning, you guys are the GOATs. And uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Um, if you guys like these videos, please hit the thumbs up button as it has helped the channel grow. Um, giving a thumbs up, it, it, it makes the channel be recognized amongst these giant, giant, giant uh, corporations and channels out there. Uh, and for me to celebrate uh, part of this 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, I have officially bought something for the Supra. And that, uh, actually, let me just show you. Hey, and uh, no, it's not my two boxers, Buster and Bruce, not them. Um, some of you guys were asking me, hey man, what clutch are you gonna using? Are you gonna be using on your fully built, fully built uh, 7M GTE? As you guys can see here, uh, my people at Clutch Masters, I'm calling my people, they don't know who I am, uh, but my people at Clutch Masters, um, I have ordered uh, pretty much, this is what's called a stage six single disc uh, clutch. So what we got here is basically uh, Clutch Masters uh, R154 stage six uh, clutch. This is pretty much the highest uh, hardcore duty uh, single disc clutch you could kind of get for the mark for the R154. And it's basically a six puck, as you guys can see. And this is their um, pressure plate that comes with this kit. Um, it's rated, I believe, uh, for about 700 foot pounds of torque. So it's rated for about 700 foot pounds of torque. And the only reason why I went for this one, there was a couple other options out there. Um, but a couple people that I talked to have used this specific clutch with the R154 and the 7M making about anywhere between 700 to 900 horsepower and about uh, 700 to like 850 foot pounds of torque and from what they have talked to me about is saying that this is going to handle pretty much everything that I throw at it. Um, once again my power goal for the 7M is Roughly 600, between 600 and 700 horsepower, hopefully. And uh, this single disc should handle everything that I throw at it. Um, so I've been told. Now, of course, there are there are, there are, there are other clutches out there, um, like a twin disc clutch, but obviously those are way above uh, what I could afford. And, um, you know, for drivability uh, wise, I felt like this clutch is gonna be perfect for what I'm gonna be intending to do to it. Nothing crazy, no drags or anything like that. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I wanted to show you guys that. Um, but I'm gonna continue to work on the Supra. What I'm gonna do for the rest of the day is uh, work on my wiring. Now I know some of you guys have asked, um, you know, it's kind of confusing because my wirings, uh, my wiring videos are not labeled as one, two, three, or four uh, part. Um, unfortunately, it's like I kind of do them randomly. Um, but what I'm going to do after this video is try to go through my page and number them one, part one, part two, part three, etc. of uh, the wiring. So it's much easier for people who are kind of trying to look back into any of the wiring all right guys one of the first things we're going to start off on is the tps sensor uh, this is a toyota style uh, four pin tps uh, and if you guys look at here real quick um, pin number three which 
is or pin number two which is idle switch signal is not going to be used on this type of uh, TPS um, so that's why in the beginning earlier I ran only three wires which were um, the ground which the, this ground is connected into the ECU and TP's, uh, TP signal and 5 volts which is supplied by the ECU so these are the first three wires that we're going to wire up uh, I'm going to depin uh, these because we're going to not we're not going to use these and uh, basically go from there Alright guys, so we have the TPS uh, three wires that we're going to need. We got them labeled there. So the plan is to um, basically repeat this same process for every single little component in the engine bay. And then once we have everything kind of pinned out like this um, and cut to length, I'm going to go ahead and remove the harness and then um, basically begin to add um, and then we're going to mark the halfway point right there at the harness and from there it's going to be one big uh, loom and from the middle part of the harness is going to be individual uh, routes coming out and then we're going to begin to um, put our mesh uh, loom and then actually install the pins into uh, the pigtails because if we have the pigtails on before anything, we are not going to be able to put the loom, the mesh loom over it. Uh, so that's the process. Alright guys, I finished uh, my IAT sensor. Uh, one thing that I learned um, doing this specific sensor is that the polarity, uh, whether it's orange or black, it doesn't really matter. I asked around and uh, basically this is just a resistor type of uh, sensor. Uh, so it, it wouldn't have mattered if I did my ground with the orange or vice versa. Uh, but just for the heck of it, I did black, uh, the sensor ground to the black and the signal to the orange. Uh, but in reality, it doesn't matter which way I would have done it. But uh, IIT sensor done, two sensors done, let's go. Alright guys, so now I'm moving on to the knock sensors. If you guys remember uh, the knock sensors, I have bought, I bought specific wiring for that. Um, if you guys can see here, this wire is specifically insulated. And that's to prevent any outside noise from getting to the signal um, because we don't want any other interference going through the knocking of, uh, you know, the signal to the ECU. Um, so each one has a specific wiring. And uh, the same thing as the IAT. Um, uh, make sure to get Bosch sensors, guys. Any other knockoffs out there on eBay or whatever. Um, they tend to have bad ground signals. Um, or interference, I'm sorry. Uh, but the Bosch sensors is also like the IAT. It doesn't matter um, the polarity of it. So it's just a matter of wiring it up. But uh, yeah. Alright guys, so it's been a couple of days later, a few days later actually, um, we ended up finishing some of the sensors over there. Um, the next ones that we were going to do were my hall sensors. As you guys can see, um, these already come <clears throat> with a little bit of loom or wiring uh, attached to them. Uh, but what I did, I had to stop there because uh, I had to order some more insulated uh, wiring from ProWire USA. Uh, this is basically 16 gauge. Just to give you an idea of how this uh, wire works, it's wrapped around one whole piece right here, and then on the inside you got this little metal uh, mesh all around it, and then on the inside it's going to be three uh, 16 gauge uh, signal wires. They're color coordinated too, so you could use them for different things. You got orange, blue, and stuff like that. Um, but uh, this is going to prevent any other uh, disturbance in the pickup of the signal going to the ECU. 
So basically you peel it back a little bit and then I'm gonna wire them to this. Um, and that's how that's gonna go. So I had to order some loom for that because I'm gonna be using that insulated wire for these two hall sensors, my crank and my uh, cam triggers. So uh, let's get that going. All right guys, a couple of things that I'm adding. As you guys know, the OEM uh, fuel pre uh, oil pressure sensor is just basically a one wire thing, or one wire sensor. Um, what I am gonna be doing is I am gonna be adding a oil pressure sensor. And also I removed the gauge for the fuel pressure and I added a fuel pressure sensor to this too. Um, these are three wire uh, sensors, basically a signal, um, a 5 volt and a ground, and uh, basically the same thing for the fuel and the oil. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I am routing uh, basically my 5 volts, uh, my signal, and my sensor ground, and those are also going to the ECU. Um, my uh, fuel pressure regulator is going to go somewhere on that end so I, I already ran I already ran my 5 volt so I'm just going to be repeating for all three uh, outputs or uh, wires for that uh, just so you guys are in the loop as far as the uh, dash side goes it's starting to look like a huge mess um, but luckily uh, like I said if you guys wire everything and if you guys um, label everything after everything is done I'm gonna remove the whole wiring harness and basically make it look really nice uh, kinda add the mesh loom like that uh, to the whole harness so right now it looks like a lot but um, luckily I know where I'm going and what step uh, by step I'm doing for, zo for those of you wondering uh, this is something that I was wondering um, if you guys see on pin number 18 on the black uh, connector that's your sensor ground and something that I was kind of wondering was okay there are like seven or eight different sensors that are going to this single little pin so I thought whoa that's kind of crazy um, one little uh, 16 gauge or 18 gauge uh, wire is basic is basically going to trigger all eight sensors in the engine bay and uh, asking around everybody and um, that has used this ECU before and that is actually that is exactly correct so basically what you do for those um, wondering uh, for both sensor ground and the 5 volt output um, from the ECU you're basically gonna branch out
All right guys, so a lot of the mess under the engine bay has been completed. Um, a couple of things that are still left to do are my coils. Uh, we got to do my uh, 4.9 uh, sensor, which is right there. I got the plug over there. We're going to be wiring up on the next video. Um, let me see. We need the coolant temperature sensor and um i believe that's that might be it so there's like three things to tackle on the next video which are my coils my uh o2 sensor my coolant temperature sensor as far as uh, what has been done here under the engine bay so far we managed to do my um crank trigger we got um down here we got my oil pressure which we got my oil pressure sensor which is over there and that's going to be getting upgraded um to one of these uh 150 uh psi um pressure sensors right here and this one is also uh used on this side for my fuel pressure sensor which is right there and then my fuel pressure sensor uh, plug is done we got the TPS uh, plug done we got my um, intake air temperature sensor uh, done and then we just finished uh, the knock sensors um, these I kinda didn't like how they came out um, but for now I'm gonna leave them like that um, I didn't have big enough uh, clear shrink um, heat shrink so I couldn't do these labeled but I did uh, make a mark on the knock sensors uh, for one and two uh, and then we got our cam uh, trigger sensor um, so that's most of the stuff taken care of under the engine bay uh, let me show you guys the uh, here's the mess that we got to do on the next video let me show you guys the mess that's going on under the engine bay I mean under the dash um, we gotta go ahead and clean this up a lot um, but give you guys an idea on how these uh, 5 volts were bridged basically basically I got um, one 18 gauge and to two 18 gauge and then these are bridged to um, uh, three over here and two over here now I confirmed with some people I guess that's uh, perfectly fine and that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, the same thing with the ground, the sensor grounds. Um, I got uh, right here, I got one 18 gauge going into the sensor ground and pin and then right here it's uh, they're kind of bridged over to um, I believe it's like five or six sensor grounds that I needed to uh, bridge for that. Um, but the plan is, once I get everything done under the engine bay, I'm going to pretty much take out the plugs and uh, clean all these up a bit. If I have to de-pin them and then kind of like untangle them and, de and pin them again, that is exactly what I'm going to do. Um, but that's what has been done on this video, guys. I tell you what, guys, I understand why the heck, you know, companies out there or people out there would charge anywhere between 1000 to like 1500 to almost two thousand dollars for making an engine harness a custom engine harness for that matter um this stuff takes a lot a lot a lot of patience a lot of time a lot of researching i'm sure once you've done it uh, a few times it goes a lot faster but um uh, me being uh, new to this i am learning a lot and um, i'm actually glad i'm doing it because um you know i'm learning a lot and uh, as i go through this and that's something that I could be proud of at the end if hopefully if everything goes well um, 
I'm sorry for taking forever to upload, but um, thank you guys as always uh, for supporting this channel. Uh, like I said, thank you guys. We hit 5,000 subscribers. If you guys are new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting that thumbs up button. Um, also a reminder, I am going to go through all the videos and label the videos uh, part 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever the case might be, for strictly wiring only. Um, a lot of you guys were asking about that, so I'm going to make that easier for you guys to uh, find out or find it on the channel. Um, but yeah, guys, I appreciate you guys' time. Um, I'm going to continue to work on the car this week. I still got I got everything officially for the fuel system other than the little seal. Uh that I'm missing but um enough talking uh yeah expect more videos to come pretty shortly all right guys uh thank you any questions comments concerns please comment down below what I look at all of them so uh, thank you guys peace out mm -hmm.